thank you for the opportunity of being able to speak here this morning. Um, I find uh, speaking in such occasions very difficult, in particular when you have to speak on the passing away of our good friend and colleague, Honorable Hussein Nengamu. You know, they, there's a saying, they say that to God we belong, to God we return. And that is an inevitability that we all have to face. We all are here, one day we won't be here. How we deal with our lives whilst we are here is critically important. Which is we know that we not only take our deeds with us, but we leave our deeds behind. And those deeds do matter. What does not matter is our status. What does not matter is our clothes, our cars, our houses. Any material well-being does not matter. I, uh, of course, would like to uh, acknowledge the uh, Mrs. Nangamu, all her five children, the Vanua, the Abuses, uh, all the people who are here, of course, the Talatalas who are here with us also. Uh, I do not intend to make a long speech, but just to make a few uh, point in points. I'm, of course, not as elegant as our speaker from Takanrove, <laughs> and uh, my Nandro dialect is very different to the one you speak. So, uh, please excuse me, I'll be speaking in the English language. I first, uh, first met Honorable Nangamu before the 2014 elections. I remember quite clearly where I met him. We had just set up the Fiji First office um, you know, near the cinema in Latoka. And uh, I had never met him in my life. And he came along with the former CEO of uh, Tropic Wood, Face Khan. And they both came to me and Face said to me, please, I want you to meet this gentleman because I think he'll make a very good candidate for Fiji First. So we stood outside on the street and started talking. And within a few minutes, he started speaking to me in Fiji Hindi. And I can tell you, his Fiji Hindi is a lot better than mine. In fact, most people from Suva would not be able to speak like him. What is, uh, I think, a couple of achievements of his, as a person, individually, he was, as the speaker before me, the gentleman from Rewanga said, he was an extremely humble man. And he was extremely kind-hearted. And that humility of his uh, was something that was quite attractive, and I found that personally very, very attractive. His ability to sit down and talk with anybody, his ability to sit down and talk and negotiate on any issue. I know there's certain things that used to make him angry, because he was very passionate about pine. As you knew, that was his background. And he used to sit behind us in Parliament. Whenever anybody from the opposition said anything about pine, you'd, I heard him muttering and getting very, very angry, in particular if there was misinformation. He also had the ability to be able to communicate really well. As you know, under his uh, ministership, we started the planting of 30 million trees project. We've already planted 8 million trees. We're supposed to plant 15, in 15 years, 30 million trees. In that, in that exercise, he visited 310 villages. 310 villages he visited. These things aren't easy to do. They're extremely difficult to do. But he had the time, he had the patience, and of course he had the commitment uh, to be able to take that particular project forward. And as a result of that, of course, we've got 8 million trees that have been planted. He first became the uh, Minister for Fisheries and Forestry in September of 2014. And then subsequently, then we split the ministries, then he retained his uh, forestry position until late last year. We know we had, he had some uh, pre-existing health conditions and he had gone overseas for the treatment. But I think one of the, the endearing points, and he sees the members of parliament who are here also with us, was again his ability to be able to, to talk to people, to be able to negotiate with people, and uh, the staff have very fond memories of him also. He was never a top-down person. He never used his position as a minister to try and impose on other people. There are, of course, some politicians who love doing that. You know, I say that they, people get what we call intoxicated by the status. They get intoxicated by the position. He most certainly was somebody who did not get intoxicated by those things. And I think for us, uh, it is a huge loss as a member of parliament. He was really a, a pioneer in terms of the principles and the values uh, of the party and of, of the government. I'd like to, of course, uh, give our deepest condolences 
to to the family. And I like to specifically, of course, uh, Mrs. Nengamu and the children, uh, Aminiasi, Isakeli, Eminoni, uh, Butaeli, and Uluka Kalisa, Kalisi, sorry. And like to and the five grandchildren, the four grandchildren that they have. Please accept our deepest condolences. Please also understand that the legacy that your father left behind uh, was something that not many people can actually achieve. As the speaker before me spoke, and he said he was always ready and willing to help people. And I think that's what good people are remembered for. And that's what we actually should try and achieve in our own lives. I always use the occasion of, a, of somebody passing away as a positive thing in the sense that we should try and use their lives as a reflection on ours and how we can improve ourselves. How well are we doing personally? Are we adhering to the scriptures? Are we adhering to what is being taught to us by the Talatalas? Are we implementing that in our daily, day-to-day -day lives? It's one thing to stand up and give a sermon. It's one thing to stand up and give a great speech. But how you practically apply that in your lives is what matters. How you treat your spouse how you treat your children, how you treat your neighbors, how you treat the community, how you treat the society, that's what matters. And that is the greatest value that you can give to your community. So with those words, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say that Honorable Hussain Nangamu will be very sadly missed, but he of course leaves a legacy with him, leave, leaves a legacy behind, and we of course remember him in the most best of memories of all. Nagla thank you very much.